Hi everyone. Today in this video let us discuss one of the well known drug mephenamic acid. What is this drug mephenamic acid? Mephenamic acid is one of the non steroidal anti inflammatory drug commonly known as NSAID. And this mephenamic acid is an anthranolic acid derivative classified as NSAID which is used to control mild to moderate pain and this mephenamic acid is particularly used to control the pain in conditions like dysmenorrhea. So this drug can be used to control the menstrual pain during the menstruation or premenstrual pain can be controlled by mephenamic acid and many of the times this drug can be combined with another drug dicyclomine which is an anti-spasmodic agent. Dicyclomine is an anticholinergic agent which produces a relaxation of GS smooth muscle. So this drug can be combined with mephenamic acid which controls the pain during the menstruation. This mephenamic acid should not be used in the children less than 14 years. So this drug is only indicated in the adults and adolescents with age greater than 14 years. Within the children the safety is not completely established. So use of mephenamic acid in the children less than 14 years is not recommended. But still mephenamic acid is available as an antipyretic agent at a low dose around 50 mg as an oral suspension to control the fever in the children. But as analgesic this drug is not recommended in the children less than 14 years. Now let us the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of mephenamic acid. Here we can easily observe it is having the carboxylic acid attached to aniline. So it is an anthranolic acid derivative. Now we can start the numbering from the carboxylic acid. So this is 1 and this is 2. So simply it is a benzoic acid derivative and at the second position it is having a side chain. This side chain is nothing but the aniline ring. So we can give the numbering here. This is 1, 2 and 3. So simply this aniline ring is having the methyl groups at second and third position. Therefore we can write this as 2,3-dimethylenilino. That is a simple name of mephenamic acid. So mephenamic acid is 2 dash 2 3 dimethyl inlo benzoic acid and mephenamic acid can also be considered as phenyl anthranolic acid with methyl substitution that's why it is having the name as mephenamic acid. Now let us see the precautions of this drug. This drug acts as a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug thereby it inhibits the synthesis of prostaglandins. Arachidonic acid is one of the important precursor which is going to be converted into prostaglandins like PGE2 and PGI2 and this step is mediated by COX-1 enzyme. COX-1 enzyme is a constitutive enzyme which is always present and responsible for physiological functions by synthesizing the prostaglandins. Now these prostaglandins PGE2 and PGI2 play an important role within the stomach. These prostaglandins can reduce the release of gastric acid thereby acid secretion is somewhat reduced by protective prostaglandins. Now mephenamic acid is a non-selective COX inhibitor that means this drug can block both COX-1 enzyme as well as COX-2 enzyme. By inhibiting the COX-2 enzyme it can reduce the pain and inflammation but at the same time this drug can also inhibit the COX-1 enzyme thereby it inhibits the sense of protective prostaglandins. When these prostaglandins are not synthesized the gastric acid is excessively secreted resulting in few of the gastrointestinal side effects such as increased ulceration, increased perforation of gastric smooth muscle and if it is untreated at very high dose mephenamic acid may also produce gastrointestinal bleeding which is commonly observed with more potent non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Aspirin is one of the drugs which can produce gastrointestinal bleeding. So if aspirin is combined with mephenamic acid, it further increases the risk of gastric bleeding. That's why this mephenamic acid should be carefully used, preferably at a low dose in order to reduce the gastrointestinal side effects. Similarly, COX-1 play an important role in the sense of many of the prostaglandins at other locations. Again, the arachidonic acid can be converted into prostaglandins like PGI2. This PGI2 is also called as prostacycline. This mediator can act on the blood vessels which are expressed with IP receptors. These IP receptors are the receptors for prostaglandin I2. 
Now PGI2 can act on these IP receptors which results in the vasodilatation. This vasodilatation prevents the clot formation as well as platelet aggregation. So prostaglandin I2 play an important protective role by reducing the platelet aggregation. Now again mefenamic acid is a non-selective COX inhibitor. It can inhibit the COX-1 enzyme activity. So the synthesis of PGI2 is going to be reduced which results in lack of vasodilatation leading to increased vasoconstriction of blood vessels. And with increased vasoconstriction and narrowing of blood vessels, the platelet may come nearer leading to platelet aggregation and clot formation. So the risk of thrombotic events are more pronounced with use of mefenamic acid, particularly for long term. So just like other anesthetics, mefenamic acid can increase the risk of stroke as well as myocardial infarction. So in those patients with pre-existing cardiovascular abnormalities or thrombotic events such as stroke and myocardial infarction or atherosclerosis, in such patients mefenamic acid should be carefully used as it further increases the risk of stroke and cardiac damage. Another important role of prostaglandins is on the renal system. Prostaglandins like PGI2 and PGE2 can increase the renal functionality. So they can act on their corresponding receptors, thereby they can increase the glomerular filtration and rate of excretion is going to be increased, which protects the functionality of the renal system. Now mefenamic acid inhibits the sense of these prostaglandins, thereby it reduces the action of these prostaglandins on the renal system. As the activity of prostaglandins is reduced, the renal functionality is also reduced, which results in the decreased glomerular filtration rate. So as GFR is reduced, excretion is also reduced, which may result in retention of few of the minerals, particularly potassium is more retained within the body, resulting in hyperkalemia. This hyperkalemia may lead to cardiovascular complications. So that's why mefenamic acid should be carefully used in those patients with decreased renal functionality or renal failure. Another important precaution is that mefenamic acid can produce some anaphylactic reactions. It can also produce some hypersensitivity resulting in skin rashes, exfoliative skin disorders, even it can produce some difficulty in breathing, dyspnea, and even phototoxicity may be produced by mefenamic acid. So if any of these symptoms are observed in the patient, then immediately the use of mefenamic acid should be stopped. Similarly, mefenamic acid can also increase the hepatotoxicity, it can increase the liver enzymes, and it may precipitate few of the symptoms such as nausea, fatigue, diarrhea and symptoms like jaundice can be produced by long-term use of mefenamic acid. Now let us see how this drug acts. On the nociceptive neurons different types of receptors are present for instance for instance EP receptors and B2 receptors are present. The EP receptors are the receptors for PGE2. Now PGE2 can act on these EP receptors which results in the activation of protein kinase A. Similarly, B2 receptors are activated by bradykinin. The, the bradykinin can act on B2 receptors resulting in the activation of protein kinase C. Both of these phosphorylating enzymes may result in depolarization and induction of pain sensation. Here prostaglandins can also sensitize the bradykinin receptors thereby they can increase the pain sensation. Now mefenamic acid can inhibit the sense of prostaglandins thereby it inhibits the pain transmission and pain sensation. Phospholipase A2 is one of the cleavage enzyme which can act on the phospholipids such that it can release one of the important mediator that is arachidonic acid. This arachidonic acid is a C20 fatty acid which may be converted by COX enzyme to various types of mediators such as PGG2 and PGH2 which are the cyclic endoperoxides again they are cleaved by COX enzyme and they are converted into various prostaglandins such as PGE2, PGI2 and thromboxane A2. The PGE2 and PGI2 particularly increase the pain sensation which is going to be blocked by mefenamic acid. Now mefenamic acid inhibits the COX enzyme activity so that it can inhibit the synthesis of prostaglandins. By this it can reduce the pain sensation and control the menstrual pain in the conditions like dysmenorrhea. Now let us see the side effects of this drug. The important side effects mainly include abdominal pain, constipation, 
It can also produce diarrhea as hypersensitive reaction. Other side effects like dry mouth, nausea, dizziness, headache can be observed with this drug. And on long term, it can also produce anemia due to gastrointestinal bleeding, fatigue, skin rashes can be observed with this mefenamic acid. How it is given? This drug is available as a tablet or capsule at a dose of 250 mg. But this drug should be given in the adults and adolescents with age greater than 14 years. The initial dose is started at around 500 mg. After 6 hours, half of the dose can be given. So it can be given at a dose of 250 mg for every 6 hours to control mild to moderate pain. Because of cardiovascular complications, this drug should be used at low dose in order to avoid any thrombotic events in the patients. So that's all about this drug mefermic acid which is an anthrenic acid derivative and classified as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. This drug reduces the COX enzyme activity but it acts as a non-selective COX inhibitor. By inhibiting both COX1 enzyme as well as COX2 enzyme, it inhibits the sense of prostaglandins which reduce the pain sensation. But this drug should be used at low dose in order to avoid thrombotic events and gastrointestinal side effects. So that's all about this drug mefenamic acid. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.